It's your boy Line Man 24 Years Free. So this is part two on the part of how, how all this happened. So by this time, basically the reality is kicking in. I'm, I'm at a stage where the bond is a million dollars. That's not realistically I'm gonna have to do this. So I'm, I'm held over for murder, charged with murder in the county jail. And eventually, you know, it's, uh, obviously it's cold and it's, it's the county jail. If you ever heard anything about old county jail, it's that. And eventually, uh, three days in, I am, I'm, I'm allowed to see a public defender, and it's a, a woman named Lori Harris. Now, Lori Harris turns out to be, unbeknownst to me, my worst enemy, even though she was sent to be a defender of me to the public. Um, and, and eventually, uh, she revealed that over time as we got into the point of trying to prove my innocence. Now, you got to understand, for me and for everybody around me, we perceive this as, you know, you didn't do this. You know, no, don't worry. You'll be fine. You didn't do this. Like, this is, okay, yeah, that is serious charges. We, we get that, but you didn't do this. You, you did, this will work out. Don't worry. And then we, it, wasn't, it wasn't working that way when it was pulling some they railroading you shit. Then it was like, oh shit, but by that time that train had left the station and this was inevitably what had to be faced. So uh, introduce Lori Harris. Lori Harris is a public defender who is actually working with the district attorney to for the city of Los Angeles to um, meet a certain quota in regards to convictions. And I don't know nothing about this, um, in regards to some tied in with the judge, Judge Pounder. Uh, judge Pounder is since with, uh, deceased, but uh, he has some aspirations about mayorship, if I'm not mistaken. Or uh, some about politics, uh, nonetheless. But the point I'm making is that I, I found myself in some sort of uh, dump truck situation in regards to this woman have zero uh, interest in defending me in regards to the charges before me. So I'm, I'm innocent thinking like, okay, well, you, you, you public defender, uh, you don't get paid much. I'm going to make this real easy for you. I'm innocent. Here, let me show you, right? And then this bitch goes, let me see that. Yeah, no, that don't exist no more. And it, and it doesn't work exactly in that fashion per se, but it works kind of in that fashion, right? Is that when I tell her about, I have evidence to prove X, Y, and Z that I'm innocent, and then she takes that information I give her. She's supposed to be my attorney working for me. She takes that information I give her and tells the, the, the enemy, this person this person that you were fighting has information that can prove his innocence. The district attorney found ways to block what I told her I had. And this is, like I said, this is merely an example of the kind of thing she used to pull. I'm going to get into all the details of all of the things in regards to you know, ticket stubs that the police had that uh, didn't manifest that proved my innocence, alibis, whatnot, you know what I'm saying, in regards to where I was that I didn't kill Larry Jenkins. But none of that stuff mattered. You know, uh, when I look at it in the big picture, because ultimately I was part of a machine that had to get swallowed up. I was uh, My number was, they had figured out a way to make it me. And like I said, they kept me in that room all that time, causing me to say shit that they knew that I didn't do, that they could prove that I didn't do, that I could prove that I didn't do, that they destroyed my proof that I didn't do. Now I'm like, okay, this is my way to tell the story. This is my way to get this out of here. So, Lori Harris, right, she is literally taking evidence that I'm giving her and giving it to the prosecution. She is literally working with the police that uh, destroyed the ticket stuff that proved my alibi, right? So then it's to the point where me and my family are uh, pulling her to the side and asking her, like, what are you doing? Like, we just seen you talking to the district attorney. 
we just seen you tell the district attorney exactly what we are, you know, what our plans are. And then she was like, no, what are you talking about? She was like, what are you talking about? I ain't, you, they're like, what are you doing? So it was, it was pretty obvious that what was going on. So I tried to fire her ass. And uh, again, this is, they refused my opportunity to fire her. They told her I can go pro bono. They made that extremely unattractive as an option, even though it was my only other option. And uh, they kind of figured out a way to f keep her on my case in order to uh, make sure that they numbered his name. And uh, all I could do is try to prove my innocence through her. It was really hard. Like, for an example, I'm going to give you an example. So it was a man named Frank Getz, right? Now, shout out to Beyonce. Uh, Frank Gaston is uh, one of uh, Beyonce's original uh, choreographers. I don't know, I'm not sure if she used, still uses him. But uh, at the time, Frank Gaston was her choreographer, and she at the time, Beyonce was with Destiny's Child. This is at the time of my trial. So Frank Gaston remembers me from being at the Beyonce video and this being part of my alibi in regards to not doing this crime and killing Larry Jenkins. So I reached out to Frank Gasson. He like, yeah, uh, you know, Frank Gasson, shout out to Frank Gasson. He, uh, he don't look at it like, oh, uh, yeah, I get him involved in that shit. He like, and I remember you. And, you know, uh, shout out to Matthew Knows. Matthew Knows uh, kind of did the same thing, even though he did it from the background. You know, he, he wasn't trying to get on the stand or nothing. I, I respect that, but he, he did say, you know, I know, I do remember you being there. You couldn't have killed nobody. But he only told me that on the phone. That means nothing in court. So we in court, right? And uh, I tell Frank Gaston, I say, look, man, uh, let me just drive you to court, right? And he's like, what do you mean? I say, let me just, let me just provide you to get to court. Like, just show up to court and you won't get to stand. He's like, no, 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 I need to talk to your attorney. I say, no, nah, don't worry about that, right? I, I say, I say, I had you put on the list to speak on to get on the stand. He like, for real? I was like, yeah. So I didn't. I didn't have him. I didn't have him on the stand. A, a list of witnesses on the stand. But I needed him to show up in court so this bitch couldn't pull no shenanigans because she clearly proved herself that she working with the, with the enemy. She's working with the opposition in regards to he railroaded me and put me in prison. So I had Frank Gasson show up at court, and he's not on the witness stand to get on the stand. So I'm sitting, in, I'm sitting in the chair. By this time, they give me a button-down shirt. They take the orange shirt off. I don't look that, like that much of a criminal no more, but it ain't no, it ain't no jury up in there yet, all right? No matter of fact, that we did have a jury already. Yeah, we did have a jury. So I'm wearing a, I'm wearing a uh, button-down shirt at this time. So Frank Gaston sits in the audience of the of courtroom. You, know, you watch court shows before. You know how that shit go, right? So he walks in the court. It's like videotape. My attorney turned around and sees him like, who is this motherfucker, right? Like, what's, what's this? My mama's sitting right there, right? I think Uncle David was there. There was a few motherfuckers that helped pull that out and get Frank Gasson in that courtroom at that time during my trial, right? So my attorney turned around and looked at him like, what is this? She looked at me like, who is this? I'm like, uh, I just look up at her. I said, this is Frank Gasson. Frank Gasson is an alibi witness that I've been trying to get you to call for like, Three days now, and you saying you can't get in contact with him? I say, yeah, this is Frank Gasson. Why you keep saying you can't get in contact with? Him? She was like, well, 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 where did he go? Well, how, well, how did you get in contact with? What, what am I with? I say, oh, look here. Uh, he want to testify. This is the courtroom. We having a trial and shit. This is a witness for my defense. You're my defense attorney. Like, this is something you should want in your interest to prove your fucking client's innocence. So I'm trying to figure out why you're trying to walk outside of putting this motherfucker on the stand immediately. He can prove that it wasn't me, right? So, so she's painting in the corner, right? She's painting in the corner. So the judge, the judge peeps all of this out of the corner he, he, from, the, from the stand. He peeps it all out, right? He says, uh, Mr. Tucker, what's going on over there? He don't even ask the judge. I mean, he don't even ask the attorney. He said, Mr. Tucker, what's going on over there? I said, Yana, 
I provided my witness to put on the stand to prove my alibi. This is Mr. Frank Gasson. He holds up his ID. Ain't look like me. I say, Your Honor, he's here to testify on my behalf that I didn't, I couldn't have been at X, Y, and Z, as they're saying, because I was with uh, A, B, and C with him at that time. So the judge like, so he's the alibi witness. He says, yep. He pauses for a minute. You don't call an attorney. He pauses for a minute. He said, and this shit could, he didn't say shit, but he said, this shit could, uh, this shit could cause a mistrial. He pauses and shit. And he said, you know what? We putting that motherfucker on, uh, on the witness list. Straight out. Frank Gasson. Bible to the you swear to the I'm up on the stand. He like he couldn't he couldn't have been there. That's 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 utterly impossible in regards to this time frame. They tried to chew him alive, but he he not having that shit. He like nah, he was there. They couldn't really dispute his testimony, but they found a way to belittle it in a in the standpoint of a witness by the name of. Miss Luna, her, her first name is escaping me this very moment, but that's all I'll get to her next in the next episode. Uh, so up in this point, this is how, this is the, the machine I'm up against. I'm up against the prison industrial complex at the trial level. You know, they they bank on you, they bank on you taking a deal. They offer me a deal, 15 a life. That was not a deal. That's an insult on top of an insult. So I'm just telling you the process of me going to trial in regards to this and how, you know, not, not being guilty means very little if you don't have no money. You know, you, 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 you're guilty if you if you broke. You're just guilty. You're guilty of being broke. Right? That's against the law. That should get you 25 to life. Right? So, look, man. I'm just telling my story, man. I'm just trying to put my shit out there. Hopefully this documentary of, of the lifeline in regards to how the timeline of how this happened. Hopefully it's helpful. You know, hopefully you get something out of this. This is a separate entity in regards to the prison life. That's all right. We're finna shoot on all kinds of levels. We're finna take this shit to new levels. 